Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now I recently decided to completely re-loft the boat which means drawing out her original plans but life size. This will enable me to reframe the boat to her original design and correct the change in shape that she's suffered over many years. Now in order to do that I'm going to have to take off a lot more planks to make the boat flexible enough to put the new frames in position. Alright so I'm still inside the shop um, just finishing up some of the lofting but uh, Riley is still here helping out. Riley how's it going up there? Oh yeah not too bad. And we've got another visitor this week. Wraith has come from, well he's from Scotland but he's come from California right? I've come from California yeah. yeah. Cool. I've come up just for a week uh, to help out. Great to be, see such an incredible po project. Cool, well thanks for coming up man. No worries at all, and, uh, thank you. Let's get to work. Yeah. <laughs> Tally ho. How's it going? Yeah, it's all right. Grinding off uh, rivets uh, it takes quite a long time. We spent the last few days taking planks off this side, cutting off the rivets, knocking through the rivets, crowbarring the planks off, and then the same on this side. Well, it took long enough, but the entire hull is now completely fair to 16th of an inch, um, and then in a few places, maybe an eighth, but I'm really happy with it. There are a few places, uh, like in the tuck underneath the transom, which were really quite difficult to get everything to come together fairly, but I'm pretty happy with the result. And I've also now drawn in all the intermediate frames in between each section, so there's now 44 frames drawn on the lofting floor. Now, while this last bit's been going on, the Guys have been getting some planks off the boat, so we're getting pretty close to being able to start cutting some frames out. In terms of lofting, before I actually start cutting a frame, I'm going to have to work out the bevels on the different parts of it and deduct the planking thickness, which varies slightly depending on the angle of the plank. But I think I'm going to work that out as I cut them, so that way there'll be more jobs for more people to do simultaneously. The other thing I've got to do before we start is get the boat itself level to her lines, so that as I put the new frames in, you can use a level to make sure they're upright and perpendicular to the baseline of the boat. Raoul rescued a baby crow that had fallen out of his nest. Apparently it's quite common that baby crows fall out of their nest and there's quite a high mortality rate. Raoul found this one on the road and we're going to look after him until he's ready to go back. Don't put that in. <laughs> He actually talks back <laughs> Logan's back. Hello. Uh, how's it going at the boat school? Oh, it's going great. I've been flanking a boat, about done with that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> So the guys are still working on getting the planks off the starboard side, but before we get into the actual framing, we've got to level the boat up to her lines. So we're going to get a jack under the keel and lift the forward half of the boat up. Wow. 
lot of hammering. We've nearly met up in the middle. Awesome. And these planks on this side look like they're going to come off way easier. I didn't know you put windows in the side of the boat. <laughs> They're getting a bit more breezy in there already. Yeah, it's nice. Hey Zoe. Yo. How's it going man? Oh, never <laughs> better. You're wrecking my boat. Wrecking your boat. Going in the museum. <laughs> Dirty. Oh no, that's keeping that clean. Don't need that. <laughs> so all the planks that were taken off the boat were labelled before they came off so I know exactly where they went on the boat and I hope to reuse as many of them as possible. Now I don't know exactly how many there will be that I can reuse because some of them are pretty badly damaged. There's quite a lot of them which are too short from the repairs in the 60s. But I should be able to use some of the short ones to repair some of the longer damaged ones. And any planks that I can't use at all on the outside of the boat I hope I will be able to mill them down and use them for interior joinery or something like that. But the reason that they've all had to come off the boat is because the new frames are going to be a very slightly different shape to the old frames to compensate for the fact that the boat has changed shape during her 100 years so as the frames of a slightly different shape are going to go in I'm going to have to be able to manipulate the hull around them to put them in their proper position after a fair few of the new frames are in then I'll replace the stern assembly the stern post the stem and the forefoot and then the rest of the frames and then the old planks will be able to go back on many people have pointed out that it would be easier to tear this all down and start again uh, but that's really not the point of what I'm doing because the way I look at it uh, if at any point during the rebuild you can look and see quite clearly that there is the shape of a boat there then that really leaves no question as to whether it's the same boat or not. If you tear it down and start again it's more practical but then it could much more easily be argued that you're just building a new boat. So this is a really clever bit so I've got my planking thickness, which is inch and three eighths or 35 mil, and I've set my compass to that. So what I'm doing is just scribing a little arc off of the line that I'm working off. So that's deducting the planking thickness. I'm just using a standard nail like this. And I'm gonna place that on the furthest point of the arc, and I'm just gonna hammer the head of the nail into the plywood on its side. All these lines are lofted to the outside of the boat, so these nail heads are going to give me a series of points of the inside of the planking of the boat, which is the outside of the frames. Now some lines drawings are drawn to the inside of the planks and some are drawn to the outside. This drawing is drawn to the outside. If it was drawn to the inside, then uh, that step of deducting the plank thickness wouldn't be necessary.
So now I've got my template, I'm uh, looking through my live oak stock and trying to find pieces which I can fit this template onto, uh, which will make good futtock pieces for the frames. So generally with uh, these frames in the middle of the boat where there's this big uh, S-curve, I'm not going to get that whole uh, length out of one piece of wood. But as these are double sawn frames, uh, they usually have butts in them and they usually offset. So in one half of the frame you might have the top part coming down and then a short piece at the bottom. And then on the other half you might have a long piece on the bottom and a short piece on the top. It's actually this long top sweep which is the hardest to find. So of course I'm looking for grain that is going the same way as the pattern and I'm just avoiding any defects in the wood such as big knots, big shakes, splits, any insect damage or anything like that. I think I've got a piece that I'm happy with for this part of this frame. So this will be the first piece that I cut out and then once this piece is roughed out then I'll mark it out more accurately and we'll take it to the ship saw and cut it out to the line. So to rough this stuff out, I'm going to use this amazing contraption, which is a Georgia ship saw, as designed and built by uh, Mr. Steve Cross down in Georgia. It's basically a heavy-duty sawzall uh, mounted to a gearbox and an air blower, and uh, the idea is that the uh, you can change the bevel on the saw and um, cut out your rolling bevels on your futtocks with the saw, but I'm just going to use it to rough this shape out, and then I'm going to use the ship saw to cut the rolling bevels. But this. Hopefully it's a good way to rough out the piece. So I roughed out the uh, new futtock uh, using the um, Georgia ship saw on one side and then ran the other side through the bandsaw after I could hold it. And the reason that I roughed it out oversized was so that if the board springs at all when it's cut out due to the tension in the wood, then I'd still have enough space to put the template on and get the piece out of it. But I wanted to cut it small enough so that I could actually hold it and maneuver it through the planer and the thicknesser. So now it's nice and flat on both sides and I'm going to remark my template on it. Uh, as accurately as possible. I'm also going to write the bevels onto the piece and then we're going to cut it out with the big ship saw. So we managed to get the first futtock of the first new frame sawn. Uh, really nice to see the 
ships all working and making light work of this live oak. Riley here's got to head off soon, but he's been here for quite a while and helped out a lot. Feels good to um, actually see this work happening finally, doesn't it? Sort of ties everything together for me too. I yeah. guess working on the saw at the start and getting it ready and then doing so much work pulling the boat apart, it's good to sort of leave with something new to go back into the boat. Yeah, man. Well, thanks, dude. Yeah, no yeah, worries. Appreciate it. It's been awesome. Thanks a lot. So Checker's gonna get some raw linseed oil on this futtock. That's just gonna help reduce the checking, reduce the little splits which will appear on the surface. And also it's gonna stop it from drying out too fast. Hopefully that will really limit uh, any distortion that happens and stop the wood from moving as it dries out. The reason we use a raw linseed oil as opposed to boiled is that it soaks in a bit better, it's thinner and it doesn't leave a sort of coating like a varnish that then hardens. You'll also see that on this futtock, I've cut it with a little bit of the wood near the edge of the tree, and that is usually called sapwood. So normally you would avoid sapwood because sapwood tends to rot away a lot quicker than heartwood. It usually is soft and not as strong. But one of the unique and amazing things about live oak is that the sapwood uh, seems to be incredibly dense, strong, long lasting and rot resistant. Really no different from the rest of the timber. And in live oak frames that are taken out of very old ships, there tends to be no more rot in the sapwood than there is in the rest of the frame. In fact, Steve Cross, who is certainly one of the most knowledgeable people about live oak worldwide, disputes whether this should even be called sapwood in live oak because it doesn't share that characteristic that sapwood has in most timbers. But it is a slightly different color from the rest of the wood. Interestingly, with most timbers, the sapwood tends to be lighter than the hardwood, and in live oak, it's the other way around. So the wood on the edge is slightly darker than the hardwood. Anyway, I would be reluctant to make a frame entirely out of this timber on the edge, but I have absolutely no problem with having parts of that on the edge of the frames. And it means I can get a lot more futtocks and a lot more usable timber out of the flitches that I've got. This does seem to me to be the consensus among boat builders who have used and are familiar with live oak, both in new boats and historically speaking. So this is David, and uh, David, you've come up from... Petaluma, California. California, somewhere in California. <laughs> David's gonna be helping uh, drive some more fastenings out and getting the planks ready to take some frames. But while I'm editing this current video that you're watching right now, he's helping to organize the wood stack. So can you tell us what's going on right here? Yep, just making some shelves for uh, pieces of wood that otherwise would be uh, underfoot. Excellent. And it's one of those jobs that makes a big difference to productivity, but which uh, it's easy not to get around to, isn't it? I love organization. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, you can stay then. <laughs> we like you. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks a lot, man. Sure. So unfortunately, the long top section on these middle section frames in the middle of the boat is probably going to be the hardest to find. It's a long and a tight curve. It seems like a shame to chop into the middle of a huge board like this, but it's really the only way to get nice grain along that length. So we're going to rough this piece up now, and there's lots of different ways of roughing these out. Um, I used the Georgia ship saw before, I used to do it with a chainsaw. Um, I've actually got the huge Makita circular saw, and probably over the course of the next few days I'll figure out the most efficient way to rough these out. So that big Makita skill saw is a really fast way of quickly roughing these out where it's not too tight and you don't have to go too close to a line and you're not trying to fit in several futtocks. It's going to be really easy to use the uh, Georgia ship saw just to connect those cuts together. All 
All right, well, it's been a good week. Um, really nice to actually get into some new wood. And I was actually cutting that first futtock on my birthday, which is just about the best birthday present I could get, I think. <laughs> and now I've just got to try and get on with it and get a decent number of these frames done in the next few weeks. But that's all we've got time for right now. So thanks a lot for watching. And a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It really does make a huge difference. And it also means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really appreciate it. All right, cheers. Mm -hmm.